didn't know why I had the eczema and doctors were just giving me ointments to calm it down. My position now is that all plants are poisonous. And I came to this conclusion by removing groups of plants, removing lectin-rich foods really helped, gradually began to remove high oxalate foods. And that really leaves no more plants. Also during the lockdown thing here, screw it, I'm not waiting two hours in line to buy produce at Costco. I'm just going to go to the farmer's market to start eating grass-fed beef. I can't believe the change in my health. I was already feeling good. You can always be better. When I got rid of all the plants, it's like removing a performance enhancement block on an engine. All right, guys, welcome. I've got special guests today. We've got Victor. And Victor, I don't want to mess up your last name. Do you say Mew or how do you say that? How do I pronounce that? You say it just like a cow would say it. Moo. Victor yeah. Moo. <laughs> got it. Yes. Okay. And, and you are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you're in Hawaii. Is that correct? I am. Aloha, Dr. Baker. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. What? What? Remind me, what's the time difference here? Because I mean, I'm on, I'm on Pacific time. Is it four hours difference or two hours? I can't remember what it was. I think, I'm not sure. I think it's at least three hours right now. Depends on- What time in the morning? What time is it it's there? It's seven in the morning here. Oh, so it's two hours difference. It's nine o'clock where I'm at. So it's not that oh, bad. Okay. Yeah. I don't feel so bad. It daylight savings time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I get. I feel bad when I have an Australian on. It's three o'clock in the morning. I feel sometimes <laughs> bad about that. But anyway, what? which uh, which island are you on? Oahu. Honolulu, Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. Hawaii. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I've been there a few times. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Gosh, I, Hawaii is such a beautiful place. I, I'm yeah, jealous. I you the last time you were here. Yeah. Well, hopefully I'll get back out there again at some point. Yeah. It's, how, how long have you been there? Have you been there your whole life? Or? I, I was born here, um, spent my childhood here, and then moved to the mainland. Um, and decided to go then, back. <laughs> yeah. We'll come back soon. Things have changed a lot in the carnivore community since you've been here, or at least in the okay. the way uh, we look at uh, uh, meat here. That's good. You got some, yeah, because you guys got a lot of grass fed cows up in there. And I, I know there's yes. a lot of wild pigs and stuff running around, a lot of axis deer over there on Molokai. And, but yeah, so there's some good opportunities there. I guess Absolutely. let's just maybe talk about your background. Could you, I, I guess your performance optimization or human optimization is your kind of catch <laughs> thing. But tell me your background. Cause I, Rick, this is the first time I get to meet you. So what, what, what's your background about? I spent half of my life as an independent filmmaker. And just in the last, since 2020, since I acquired what is now Superhuman, it was a cryotherapy and massage therapy business. And during the pandemic, they wanted to sell. I was doing filmmaking, but I was already starting to do like health coaching on the side. I didn't want to travel during all that chaos. I wasn't interested in getting getting put in quarantine every time I left the island for meetings or for work. So I I bought the business and I just pivoted into the health and wellness business. Okay. So, had you had an interest in that prior to? I think so. Ever since I was a kid, it was either like be a scientist and then, or when Star Wars came out, I, I said, oh, you know what? I want to make films. But I was always interested in science and how the body works. I did a sleep deprivation exercise when I was maybe 19, 20 years old because I couldn't figure out why we needed to sleep. And I, I found out the hard way that, that we need to sleep because I, I ended up with uh, pneumonia. And uh, mm. the doctor said I had to stay in bed or he would send me to the hospital. <laughs> Yeah, I think what Star Wars, I think, came out in 77, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing that as a kid. It was it was very impactful. It was one of those sort of groundbreaking films. Now, you look back at it today, and you'd say it's the the technology isn't that impressive, but it really was given the time frame. But when you said you did a well, the sleep deprivation experiment, what was that about? Why, why were you doing that, and how did you do that? Just, 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 just when, I just wouldn't sleep. Yeah, I just didn't go to sleep. For how long? And ended up after maybe, I think it was a week, and I ended up just mm. collapsing in bed, and I couldn't get out. I get back up, and went to go see the doctor, and he said, "Oh yeah, you have pneumonia." <laughs> so, what, what possessed you to try to not sleep for a week? It's I was working full time. I was going to school. I was out partying every night, and 
I just wanted more hours in the day and I couldn't, mm -hmm. couldn't figure out really why we needed to sleep. I figured we eat food for energy and drinking coffee gives you energy. So why do we need to sleep? I, th I think it becomes apparent when you don't sleep that, that, that the outcome is pretty darn bad as people go. So that's one of the things that I think people do for torture, actually. I think in some of these hold people awake and they won't let them sleep for periods of time to break them. And I think that's one of the things they do with political prisoners. I know that now. And, uh, and that I, I, yeah, I definitely get try to get enough sleep depending on I have an aura ring and track my sleep. And today I'm a bit short on sleep because I was up late trying to make sure all these systems are working and then and then getting up before seven to make sure everything was still working. We had actually, we had a brownout last night while I was testing the equipment. So that was, okay. yeah. Are you guys having a lot of uh, power grid issues there in, in, in Hawaii? I got to tell you, ever since they gave up coal, uh, yeah, I just started this month rolling brownouts or blackouts. Okay. Interesting. The nice thing is with Hawaii is it's never freezing cold and it's never like ridiculously hot. It's always pleasant weather. So you, you can, you're not going to freeze to death in Hawaii if you don't have heat. That's for sure. What, so you mentioned the carnivore scene has changed somewhat since I was last there. And I think the, I'm trying to remember the last time I was there. Last time I was there, I think I was in, actually I was in Maui a year ago, July, January. So just a little over a year ago, I was actually there, but I, I I went to Lanai. Was it Lanai where they got where it was burned? Where the burning was? Yeah. Before or Lahaina rather, Lahaina. My, my bad. Before it got burnt. But what, what's changed carnivore wise since I've been there last? I do run into people that have heard of carnivore, but I think for me because I eat exclusively grass fed cows or grass fed ruminants, the availability of grass fed animals has expanded to every supermarket. I think when you were here, there was a, a girl named Jesse and Forage Hawaii that was selling grass fed beef and organs. Mm -hmm. That was pretty much the only place you could get it. And now you can get it at all the supermarkets, at Foodland, Safeway, of course, Whole Foods sells it as well. And then you can also get it from uh, you, like you said, the deer are running rampant on the outer islands, and we have wild pigs as well. Yeah, and, so and you know, quite, a lot, quite a few chickens running around, as I recall. At least, and, I'm, at and, least I remember and the back air chickens. For sure. yeah. yeah, the chickens everywhere, which I guess they're not too good to eat, I'm told. But, and I think I remember there was a couple like hamburger shops that uh, especially, were especially with grass finished. I can't remember. I remember one that I think You're it, right. I think it was. Yeah, around. there, yeah, there so, are. Yeah. Let me go, let's talk about human optimization a bit, because obviously I talk a lot about diet, which I think is obviously a big part of the equation, but, and you've got this cryotherapy center. Maybe you can discuss that a little bit or whatever you want to talk about with regard to human optimization. Yeah, literally human optimization starts with diet. That's what I learned myself. That's one of the reasons why I'm actually, that's part of the, I explained to you the physical reasons why I am where I am today, but the other part of the equation, which is my own health, is another part of the equation. I, as an independent filmmaker, I was living overseas for half my life. I, um, after my sleep deprivation exercise, I ended up in Vienna, Austria, and lived there for five years, and moved to France, lived there for 10 years, and then went to go work in China for the Olympics. And then I ended up living there for 10 years. And in China, I got so sick. I, there was nothing where I ended up in a hospital bed, but I was getting lumps in my body and I was getting a month long brain fog that wouldn't go away and a migraine on one side of my head that didn't go away for a month. And I was sleeping 12 hours and waking up still tired. And that got me really focused on health. And luckily I found, so in, in Europe, I learned what real food is. And in, in China, I learned that there are different ways to heal the body without Western medicine, which couldn't help me at all. And opened my eyes to a whole new way of healing the body. And I've been learning and experimenting ever since then. So, 
human optimization is basically making sure that you, you're thriving, not just surviving. And definitely diet is the, the foundation. And I, I preach that to everyone that walks in here. And the plant-free diet is really the only way to eat if you want to optimize your yourself as a human, to be an optimal human. Now, with that as a foundation, I have the technologies that can continue to make you faster, better, stronger, um, reverse your biological aging, that sort of thing. Um, but it all begins with diet. And you are such uh, an important uh, factor in not just my life, but also of, of superhuman. When I first heard you on um, Joe Rogan's podcast, that really planted a seed. And then I didn't go carnivore right away. And I maybe not, I'm not pure carnivore right now because I, I do eat honey. But you were right. You were right. I don't remember how long ago I, when you were initially on that Joe Rogan podcast, but that, that planted the seed. And I came about it maybe from another direction and slowly eliminated plants without knowing that I was actually just on the path of eliminating plants. My position now is that all plants are poisonous and should not be eaten by humans. And I came to this conclusion by removing groups of plants or groups of plant poisons. I began with lectins. That would be following the work of Dr. Stephen Gundry. So I took all those out and I felt so much better. One of the things that I suffered from, not just when my health broke down in, in China, but also I think previously while I was living in Paris, I started to get eczema and really my, my digestion started failing. And I didn't realize it at the time. I just thought I just, some foods didn't agree with me. And I didn't know why I had the eczema and doctors were just giving me ointments to supposedly calm it down, but removing the lectin rich foods really helped. And then I started to hear about oxalates. So, um, I started, uh, looking at the work of, of, uh, Sally K Norton and gradually began to remove uh, high oxalate foods. And that really leaves no more plants, right? So <laughs> I, during, also during the whole lockdown thing here is when I, I said, screw it. I'm not waiting two hours in line to buy produce at Costco. I'm just going to go to the farmer's market and go to Forage Hawaii and just start eating grass-fed beef and organs. And I can't believe the, the change in my health. Like I was already feeling good. And that's what, why I say it's all about human optimization and being superhuman. You can always be better. I thought I was doing great. Sure, I was sometimes bloated from some of the, the plants I was still eating, like onions or cauliflower, things like that. But it was when I started to, when I got rid of all the plants and, and that still, that was still a process because I was still doing the superfood powders like spirulina and chlorella, maca, uh, ashwagandha. Can't remember what else I was putting into my little uh, smoothie. But once I got rid of all of that, it was, it's removing a performance enhancement block on an engine or something, a limiter. And I'm just getting better and better. <laughs> and uh, how, long, how long have you been, Vic, let me, how long have you been at it that you've noticed these improvements? I'd say three years. It's been three years, no plants, except I was still doing fruit because one of my, one of my vices is this, I, is ice cream. And I was trying to find ways to make good, healthy ice cream. And I, and I was, I was eating fruit. And that's one of the reasons why I'm eating, I'm still eating honey because I found this amazing way to make uh, ice cream It's and get my my daily fat <laughs> so i take a, a stick of grass-fed butter and i blend it into raw milk and then i add a, maybe i think it's two ounces of honey so 
Oh, it's, okay. It's yeah, maybe there's no such thing as healthy ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, but, but it, at some point, so, because you said all vegetable, all plants are poison. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of people who disagree with that. Most of the world would disagree with that, I would say. Oh, yeah. But your experiences, just your unique personal experiences by, by removing pretty much all the plant compounds from your body, you saw significant improvements in your health. Is that a fair statement? That's absolutely the, the list is so long, it's, I could be here all during the whole podcast talking about it. I understand that <clears throat> most of your, the people that are going to listen to this are already carnivore. If you're not carnivore, I can tell you it's the ultimate human diet. And some people say it's a species-specific human diet, but if you don't think all plants are poisonous, then you're not looking at the literature. They're, they have thousands of poisons in them, and a lot of them are actually carcinogenic. So one of the things about uh, this position here in Hawaii is that there are a lot of plant-based people. It's really trendy right now. And the people that come in here, they're some of the smartest people on the island because they're doing the research. If, I, if you ask anybody about cryotherapy or hyperbaric oxygen therapy or about nano V power plate, whole body vibration therapy. They won't know what it is, but I, I do get people that have done the research and they come in here and they specifically for those technologies. Unfortunately, they've also gone down this whole plant-based rabbit hole. So when they come in, it's usually because there's something wrong. And I prefer to people to look at uh, preventing rather than curing. And a lot of these things that went wrong uh, were because of their diet or are, are because of their diet. And um, uh, they're looking for basically a, an alternative to taking a pill, which is commendable, but they could just stop eating plants and they would feel a lot better and yeah. excel. How how frequently are people willing to actually make those changes when they come in to see you? Or they just say, just stick me in the cold freeze and I'll worry about it later. How, how often do you see that? Very rarely. But the people that do, they thrive. I have people that come in here, they've had one, one knee replaced. They come in because their second knee is starting to give. And so they're, they're here doing, they want to do the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They want to do the cryotherapy. For people that don't know, cryotherapy is uh, a chamber where the the temperature of the chamber drops to maybe negative 200 degrees within uh, a few minutes, three minutes, three minutes max. And we try to get your skin temperature to drop about 20 to 30 degrees. And that is, a, is an environmental hormetic activator or effect. And it, it activates a lot of repair and regeneration mechanisms in the body they've got arthritic conditions or they've got joint pains or back pains and they come in and the cryotherapy relieves the pain and it helps the body to heal. Now, the problem is it doesn't address root causes. When maybe the handful of people that have gone carnivore or removed a lot of the plants from their diet, they're believers. Now, whether they can still hang on to that way of that lifestyle is another question. A lot of them treat it just like it's it's a pill they'll stop eating plants until they feel good and then they'll go get back on the plants and then then their body starts falling apart again they get off the plants and a, a, a sliver of those people decide they're going to change their lifestyle forever and those are the ones that are uh, still working when they thought they would have to leave their career or are um, are, are otherwise excelling is there a carnivore community on in Hawaii right now? Is there a, a group of people that kind of associate with each other or no? No, I can definitively tell dating right now is just is dismal. <laughs> Nobody understands what I'm trying to do. I, I probably sound crazy to a lot of people. I do meet random people that say they're carnivore, but when I dig into it, they're still like people love poi. They love rice. And a lot of times they forget that those are actually plants. I'd love to find a community. I think uh, Jesse from Forage Hawaii tried to start a community a few years back. I'm not sure what, what happened with that. 
Yeah, I'm aware of some people in Hawaii that, that largely do carnivore different types. But I, again, it's there's a lot of people in Hawaii. There's, you know, what, there's, I think there's a million people in Honolulu alone, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm here. They should come in and we can have a chat. We can start a community. There you go. Where and your what's the name of your your facility? It's what's it, what's it's it called? It's superhuman, superhuman Sup- health technologies superhuman. and therapies. Okay. We're in the Ala Moana area. I don't know if you remember that big shopping mall right next to the beach. Mm, maybe we're a little bit maybe. inland of that. Remember. Okay, okay. What? So you'd mentioned a couple modalities that you have. You'd mentioned cryotherapy, obviously hyperbaric oxygen vibration plates and some other something else i couldn't i didn't catch what are those things used for typically can you go through some of those different modalities oh you were breaking up but i think you were asking about what these technologies are and what they do and w- the reason why i reached out to you is because i, I he- had heard that you had been injured yeah. doing jujitsu and I-, I was doing jujitsu too so i definitely understand the amount of pressure that you put your body under when you're seriously training jujitsu mm-hmm. i wish Maybe in another brownout. <laughs> That's true. We lost him. Shoot, guys. I'm going to stick around for a couple minutes to see if he comes back on. If not, then this will be a short interview. <laughs> I don't have any jokes prepared, pre prepared jokes. Yeah, I've been to the, 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 among Hawaii, I've been to, I think, the four major islands, Oahu a few times, and then... Oh, there All right, I'm guys. back. There you are. Do you, have another, you guys have another brownout or something? <laughs> the internet just... Get, got it. I don't okay. know. <laughs> the question I was asking was, you mentioned a number of different modalities that your that, that superhuman facility that you have run, that you run has. Cryotherapy hyperbaric oxygen, vibration plate, and something else. And I don't, I'm not sure what else. What do those things do? What do you find them to be useful for? The reason why I initially wanted to talk to you, Dr. Baker, is because you had hurt your neck doing jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. I was practicing jujitsu up until pretty much I started superhuman. So I understand the amount of pressure that you're, you put your body under with when, when training jujitsu and I was wanted to talk to you about just about what, how to make yourself even better than you are, because mm-hmm. I wish everybody was like you when they came in, because then I could really focus on making you better. And that's what these technologies really do. They can he- heal you and make you human. But my goal is to make superhumans. A lot of, so I explained cryotherapy. We have an infrared sauna and sauna is more than just sweating, especially in an infrared sauna, because the wavelength of the infrared energy, which is used to heat the body from the outside in. And some people say the inside out because- I'm still here and you're still there. Are are you still, okay, here we go. So I don't know where, let's see, where do we, where were we? Infrared sauna mm-hmm. is using infrared energy to heat the body using the same infrared energy that your body makes to keep you warm. The temperature of the actual sauna is not rel- not relatively high. Ours maxes out at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. But that's not, that's not important. It's the infrared energy that's heating you in the same way your body heats itself. And, and then what happens is this infrared energy that your body makes actually creates a, a kind of water in the body. It's called the fourth phase of water. It acts as a, in your cells, it acts as a potential energy battery pack to drive cellular functions, uh, notably a protein folding or activation of proteins and the, at least our infrared sauna at uh, 9.4 microns or uh, 9,400 nanometers is using the same energy to beam into you and increase your, this energy in your body, but that also creates heat. And so you are activating proteins, you're getting, you're building up this exclusion zone water in all your blood vessels and your lymphatic vessels. 
And most people will say that infrared sauna has a lot of detoxification qualities, and this is what separates it from a standard dry sauna or steam sauna, is that it detoxifies the body because so much of this exclusion zone water builds up in the, the fat cells that it actually starts to push out a lot of fat soluble toxins, which then get up eventually leaving the body through the sweat. And that's one of the main differences. Otherwise, you have all the benefits of, of a sauna from the heat. You have the FOXO3 activation. You've got human growth hormone release. You have increased heart rate and blood flow and blood vessel dilation. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is literally like a fountain of youth. And that's one thing that I was hoping you would try for your neck issues. And because you really work out so much and you're in such good physical shape, I want you to keep going at it. And one of the reasons why I got into this whole human optimization was because at I was about 50 years old when I, no, maybe I was 52, 51, 52, when I'm 53 now, when I was still a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. I was looking at how much longer it would take for me to become a black belt. I said, oh, at this rate, it's going to be really tough. So I need to start reversing my aging and be and and keep myself young in order to become a black belt and enjoy it. So you've got the diet nailed, right? But now you can start layering, layering, layering in these technologies. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is literally a fountain of youth. They just came out with a study this past summer, and it showed that there's no difference between those soft shell chambers and the hard shell chamber like the one I have behind me. Even with the lowest pressure setting at 1.3 uh, ATA, they were getting from their, their sub test subjects, they were getting three, three times stem cell mobilization. And stem cells, you had a guest that was really uh, interesting because he was explaining stem cells very well. Stem cells are the, are what make all the cells in your body. Each of the cells in your body starts with a, a stem cell, a, a cell that doesn't know what it's going to be, and it's, it gets designated as that cell. So the more of those you have circulating in your body, the healthier and basically the younger you will be. So hyperbaric oxygen is just an airtight chamber that, that pressurizes. And then it's just really a physics and how your body works. It's Henry's law of, of gas that says if you pressurize air over a liquid, that, that air, that gas will dissolve into the liquid. So what we're doing in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, no matter what the pressure is dissolving those gases, oxygen, and maybe even nitrogen and carbon dioxide, we don't really know what those do in the body when they get dissolved into your body fluids. We're learning that carbon dioxide is way more important to you than we initially thought. It's not a waste gas, but let's just focus on the oxygen that gets dissolved into all your body fluids. Like at this moment right now, our red blood cells, which transport oxygen to our cells is pretty much at max capacity. It's carrying 97 to 99% of, of its capacity. So what we're doing is we're dissolving the oxygen into your plasma, but not just your plasma. It's also your lymphatic fluid. It's the interstitial fluid. It's the cerebral fluid. It's the spinal fluid. So that oxygen, it, and then the pressure pushes that oxygen um, uh, into the, the cells. And it reaches four times as far, depending on the pressure, as the oxygen would reach under normal sea level pressure conditions. So we have, you have the benefit of the, the additional oxygen for that hour and a half that you're in the chamber. And then the actual decompression phase is equally as important. When you decompress that, those ox, the oxygen actually starts to re-expand. So it got, it got pressurized and dissolved into your bloodstream. And then during when we decompress, all of that expands and it pushes the oxygen even more into your cells. And then we go into the benefit that 
triggers the stem cell mobilization and the telomere lengthening and the angiogenesis, the creation of new blood vessels. During the decompression, your body was, it thinks it's actually going hypoxic. But this is a relative hypoxia because you're only going from a hyperoxygenated environment, which your body feels is now the new normal. You're going down to what it considers a hypoxic environment. And just like with cryotherapy or with sauna, where we use cold and heat to make your body think that it's either freezing to death or it's dying of heat, we're tricking the body into thinking that it's going hypoxic. So that's, that's where you get a lot of the release of mechanisms that repair and regenerate your body. And then you've got the oxygen to really ramp that up. That's hyper, that's hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And then we have things like the nano V nano V uses the same theory as infrared sauna. It creates bioidentical energy using water and it, you breathe that it vaporizes the water. It comes out through a tube that you can either breathe directly from, or there's a nasal cannula that can provide it. And you breathe this slightly humidified air and it transmits basically energy into your body that, that is the same energy that your body makes to turn the water that you drink into the water that's in your cells. And that creates more, more proteins. And the proteins, aside from making hormones and your muscles and skin and hair and nails, it's also little machines that repair your cells, repair your DNA. And that's how the NanoV repairs cellular damage is the signal that the, the this energy creates in the body also activates the body's natural antioxidant mechanisms your body normally releases antioxidants when it senses that you're making this energy and when when we introduce that signal with the nano v you ramp up the body's natural antioxidant response without having created that free radical damage that it would uh, normally have to clean up. So you're just ramping up that antioxidant response. Um, we also have the Normatec. Normatec is a compression therapy and that will, uh, it's like squeezing a tube of toothpaste from the bottom up and it does this to your extremities. So your legs or your arms. And the primary goal is to get that lymphatic fluid pushed from your feet all the way up to your, the lymph nodes in your groin area and get all that dirty lymphatic fluid out of your body and then let the blood flow back and push that lymphatic, lymphatic fluid through the interstitial fluid and back up through the lymphatic system again. And we also have power plate. So power plate uses whole body vibration. It has a patented 360 degree vibration pattern that actually activates up to 95% of your muscles, muscles that you don't even think that you, you can't really use consciously. This all happens unconsciously. Again, this is another hormetic effect. We're sending signals to the brain that the body is off balance in, in all these directions and your body is actually taking over and firing off all these muscles that, that not just make you stronger, but also keep you stable. And that will, that builds bone density, helps with cognitive function. I use it when the weather has been lately, very windy, not a lot of good waves and really cold. I use it to, to stay in shape for when I go back out and surf again. We also offer the traditional massage therapies and acupuncture, cupping, we offer exosome therapy. That's another thing I wanted to talk to you about, Dr. Baker. You've got stem cell therapy, and I, I think you did stem cell therapy recently. Uh, I believe that exosome therapy is the next frontier of stem cell therapy. You don't need to extract stem cells from your own body. You don't need to get it from another person. Exosomes are the signaling nanoparticles from stem cells. So the guest that was the stem cell expert that was on was talking about how Stem cells are attracted to certain areas of the body, especially when you have an injury or something. And so exosome therapy works very similarly in the sense that if you inject these exosomes into the area that you want stem cells, those 
stem your stem cells will amass in that area. It's, it's it's telling them this area you need to focus on this area, and it pulls all your own stem cells into that area. Now, if you combine that with the stem cell mobilization and creation of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, you've got you've got more stem cells, and the exosomes tell them <clears throat> where the exosome therapy tells them where to go. And what else? Yeah, we also have a neurofeedback therapy, which is helping the diagnose issues with the brain and then provides basically brain exercises to address those issues. And that's anything from anxiety, depression, PTSD, AD, ADHD, learning disorders, and things like that. And then me, I'm and you, okay. trying to get people to stop eating plants. I sleep, consult with them about optimizing their sleep. And then I have a lot of detoxification detoxification protocols, liver, gallbladder, and intestinal detoxification protocols, kidney detoxification, parasite cleanses. <clears throat> this is really important. This is where I, I have been able to, as a result of ridding my body of parasites using horse paste, as the media likes to call it, I've been able to actually release physical evidence of these plant poisons in the form of oxalates. And I've actually, being the kind of science hobbyist I am, I, I actually was able to extract physical evidence of oxalates, not in the form of kidney stones. These came out of my urine. And uh, these are calcified liver and gallbladder stones. And this is, I don't know if you can see that, but this is, Oxalates had formed on my teeth. Just oxalates alone, if you talk to Sally K. Norton, they are the root cause of all of humanity's ills. So if you can remove plants, you won't have to deal with the oxalates, although you have to deal with the, the oxalate dumping and somehow getting rid of parasites and then taking horse paste on a regular basis has accelerated the dumping of the oxalates. It's, I'm sorry, so you said taking horse paste on a regular basis. What do you mean yeah. by that? So do you remember when Joe Rogan got sick during the last few years and he was taking, instead of getting injected with the Pfizer and Moderna products, he took something called ivermectin. Yeah, ivermectin is a very potent antiparasitic amongst other things. That's a really good way of... of clearing parasites out of your body and and well i mean it's it's it's, it's, it's it's yeah it's, it, i think original indication as was an anti-parasitic i think if i'm not mistaken i think that's what it was designed for correct yeah 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 okay. and so um, I, I let me just ask you you've got all these different modalities and you, you mentioned some of the observed effects in studies and things like that, where they look at these sort of metabolic processes and whatnot. What is it? What is the real world outcome? Because if, if my FOXO is up, FOXO, whatever is upregulated, some gene is upregulated, what does that actually mean to me? So what are the practical implications of doing these things? How often do you have to do and what's the dosage? How long does it take to have, to reach an effect? And what are the typical effects you might see? Okay. Each modality has different recommended dosage. The sauna you could literally use every day. And mm -hmm. although the you should hit an average of 57 minutes a week of sauna and then 11 minutes of cold. And that cold doesn't have to be in a cryotherapy chamber. It could be in a cold bath or it could be cold showers or even just diving into the ocean. And the benefits are myself personally, it keeps me in shape because I'm here at the at Superhuman seven days a week. And I, I don't train jujitsu anymore. I, I We had a good summer and fall. I was able to surf pretty much every day. But when I'm not surfing, I'm in the sauna and I'm doing power play and it maintains my muscle mass. I'm actually gaining muscle even though I'm not exercising because of the human growth hormone release. It, it elevates my mood. I'll be thinking about business stuff and I come out of the sauna and all of a sudden it's just rainbows and unicorns, better sleep, deeper sleep. Even people with sleep issues have reported that. 
and and then there's detoxification, the detoxification benefits. It's one of the only ways you can get, for example, heavy metals out of your body, like mercury and cadmium, volatile organic compounds. That's some of the benefits of sauna. Oh, and then the increased stamina because of the increased heart rate and the, the vasal uh, dilation. And by forcing all the blood to your extremities, that's also to your brain. And that's people have uh, better, more clarity, <laughs> you could say. As far as, and then the power plate, the whole body vibration therapy, that, you know, I'm just, I'm getting stronger and better at surfing because of that. But otherwise people with ankle injuries or other injuries will come in and they'll jump on the power plate. They don't understand why vibrating their body at 30 times a second, 30 to 50 times a second helps, but they rolled their ankle doing a ruck and they have to do it again the next day. They jump on the power plate and after multiple sessions on the power plate, they're almost as good as new. I have Kapuna, I have elderly that come in and they're reluctant to do the power plate and I insist and they can't even stand up straight on there. They get all wobbly and have to use support to stay on the power plate initially. But after about, I would say about a month of doing it uh, once a week, they're able to stand by themselves. So it, it builds the muscle, it builds the balance and coordination. That's some of the observed benefits of the power plate. The hyperbaric oxygen chamber, I myself, so I tore an ACL doing jujitsu and didn't get surgery, just doing infrared sauna, Normatec, Nano V, power plate, hyperbaric oxygen chamber. That was a few years ago. Now with my optimized diet that is plant-free, I when I moved into this new space, so we were in uh, Kakako before, now we're here in Ala Moana, and I actually dropped the cryotherapy chamber on my knee. So it pinched, the cryotherapy chamber fell on the front of my knee and it pinched it against the edge of the box truck that I was loading it into as we were going up the hydraulic lift. And it was wrecked. I thought it'd be out of the water for at least a month. Bruised, swollen, it was painful. And as soon as I could, I jumped in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and I would literally like, after the first session, the swelling had gone down by maybe 15%. And with successive sessions, the bruising was going away and the inflammation kept going down. And within two weeks, I was already back out in the water, running up to the nose of my longboard and enjoying myself. I couldn't knee paddle, but that was very interesting. And I have similar results from people that get injured. One interesting thing is I have, I had a flight attendant and she would always come in and her legs would just be just ballooned out. And we kept having this debate. She says, but the cabin of the airplane is pressurized. And I was explaining to her, it's pressurized, but it's only pressurizing enough to keep you alive and comfortable, but you're still at a negative pressure. So you're in a hypoxic environment that's going to create inflammation and starve your cells of oxygen. And I put her in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and she came out and her legs had already gone pretty much back to normal. And a lot of the aches and pains she had in her body went away. And uh, otherwise we get people that I had, I had one guy, he had flown to Korea to get a nose job, but it went wrong. And um, he had necrosis and mm. uh, the doctor over there said, go find a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So we put him in the ox hyper oxygen chamber, hyperbaric oxygen chamber and um, he still has his nose today. The, the color started coming back. And unfortunately, once people get healed, then, then they just stop, they stop coming in. But for me, the goal is to get you to keep doing that and make you just better and better and better. And younger, in our case, younger and younger and younger. For me, I think it's seen half century of brain trauma, right? So hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a good way to get your brain to repair itself. I feel like I'm smarter. I can remember things better. I feel like my reaction time when surfing has improved. I have 
I, I, I just have better muscle memory. I do so many things that it's hard to now pinpoint what does what. But uh, yeah, I even have people that have cancer that add this to their their standard of care plus diet. And they've, they've had stage four cancers and have been able to put those into remission. It's really amazing what uh, hyperbaric oxygen can do. And, and for you, Dr. Baker, aging is like gravity, right? So if you can break free of gravity, angiogenesis, more stem cells, you're going to be like this for, right? We're supposed to only be able to live to 120, but I think Dave Asprey has it right. You should be able to pass at the time and the place of your choosing. And I really feel like that's possible considering where I started, which was a shadow of who I am today and being told, oh, you're just getting old, right? That's, you're like the, you're already superhuman, but you can just take it to the next level. And I'd love to see you take it to the next level as well as repair from those injuries. So you, you're constantly breaking your body down when you're lifting all these heavy weights and doing all this exercise. You, you, you would really benefit from um, doing exercises that will actually build yourself back up, right? When you're working out, you're actually breaking down muscle tissue. And it's during the recovery phase that you actually repair that and make it make everything stronger. I'd love to see you try the hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy. Um, well, I'm um, not opposed to trying it. I think it'd be fun to do. But anyway, Victor, we are unfortunately running out of time. Share with us where people can find you again, if you have some sort of uh, social media or remind me of the name of the, the, the center again. Yes, yeah, superhumanhi.com is our website. You can find us even doing a, a, a internet search, Superhuman Honolulu. Instagram is hi, at Superhuman Health hi. And if you're a carnivore and listening to this and you're in Hawaii, come see me. I'll hook you up. It'd be great to, to speak with some like-minded people. Awesome. My next time in, I'm in Honolulu, which I don't know when that'll be, but I'll try to stink swing by. So thank you very much, Victor. Appreciate yeah, come it. soon. Yeah, I'll take good care All of right. you. All right. Take Aloha. care. Aloha.